Kia ora everyone, Murray here again in my little house at Waiheke Island. Uh, look, I've got a really neat book to share with you today. It's called Library Mouse and it's by Daniel Kirk and it's about a mouse called Sam who obviously lives in a li library. It's all about how Sam becomes a writer. And whenever I read this book, I get really important messages about what it's like to be a writer and how you can go about it. Let's actually read about Sam and see what we can work out about being a writer. Okay? Right, we'll start at the beginning, obviously. Look at him there. I love this. Sam was a library mouse. His home was in a little hole in the wall behind the children's reference books, and he thought that life was very good indeed. Every day, when the library was full of people walking up and down the aisles, studying, checking out books, and working on the computers, Sam was curled up in his little hole, sound asleep. Every night, when the people went home and the room was dark and quiet, the library belonged to Sam. And every night, Sam read and he read and he read. Sam read picture books and chapter books. He read biographies and poetry. He read cookbooks and sports books. He read fairy tales and ghost stories and mysteries by the dozen. There he is reading. Look at that pile of books that he's got ready to get into. Sam's mind was filled with facts and information and images of faraway places and his imagination brimmed over with wonder and fantasy. One night, Sam decided that it was time that he wrote a book of his own. Sam folded over some little squares of paper he took from the librarian's desk to make the pages. Then he found a pencil that had rolled underneath a shelf and he began to write. Write what you know, Sam had read in a book about writing. So Sam wrote about being a mouse. He drew the pictures for his book by posing his little mirror and then sketching what he saw. Sam worked very, very hard, and finally his first book was done. He called it Squeak, A Mouse's Life, and he wrote on the cover Words and Pictures by Sam. He went to the biography autobiography section of the library, and he tucked his first book onto the shelf. Then he went back to his little hole in the wall, and he waited. The next afternoon, sunlight streamed in through the library windows. What's this? asked a girl whose teacher had sent her to the library to do a book report. I've never seen anything like this before, said the librarian, and she put Squeak a Mouse's Life on her desk. Later, she showed it to some of the other librarians. Sam decided to write another book. It was called The Lonely Cheese, and working on the book made him feel very hungry. It was a good thing that he always found so many crumbs to eat by the trash basket in the hallway. When he'd finished the illustrations, Sam scurried to the picture book section and proudly placed his latest book on the shelf. Then he went back to his little hole in the wall and he waited. The next morning, sunlight streamed in through the library windows. What's this? asked a little boy who was looking for a big book about trucks. It's another book by Sam, said the librarian. Just who is this Sam? she thought to herself and put the lonely cheese on her desk. Later, she showed it to the children at story time. 
Sam decided to write a chapter book. It was called The Mystery of Mouse Mansion, and it gave Sam goosebumps when he wrote down the scary parts. The full moon was shining down through the windows of the darkened library when Sam crept over to the mystery section and sneakily placed his book on the shelf. Then he went back to his little hole in the wall and he waited. The next day, sunlight streamed in through the library windows. What's this? asked a teenager who was looking for a good creepy book to read before bed. We've got to find out who this Sam is, said the librarian. I'll leave a note on the bulletin board and tell him that I'd like to meet our new author. She put the mystery of Mouse Mansion on her desk. Later she showed it to the writing class that came in after school. That night, Sam found the note. It read, Dear Sam, all of us at the library have been enjoying your books immensely. We're all wondering who this mysterious Sam really is. Whoever you are, you certainly have a lot of talent. Not everyone has it in them to write even a single book, let alone three. We think it would be fun to have a Meet the Author Day with you as our special guest. The children would love to hear you read your books and share some of your secrets for writing. Yours truly, Mrs. Forrester, Head Librarian. I love that picture. Sam felt very nervous. He was happy that the children at the library liked his books. He was flattered that they wanted to meet him. But mice, as a rule, are very shy when it comes to meeting people. Sam couldn't understand why people thought that writing and making up stories was so hard. If only they would try, they might find out that writing was really lots of fun. Sam had an idea. He went to the librarian's desk and got some supplies. All night long, he wrote and he drew and he snipped and he folded and he stapled his little rectangles of paper into mouse-sized books. In the morning, when the librarian opened up the children's room, there was a sheet of paper taped to the door. Meet the author today, it read. A little girl was the first to see Sam's display, all set up on the front table. What's this, she asked. There sat a tissue box with a pair of pencils taped to the sides and a banner stretched across the top. On the banner was written, Meet the author, with an arrow pointing down. The girl bent over to look in the empty tissue box. Oh, she said in surprise. For there, at the bottom of the box, lay Sam's little mirror. And in the mirror, the little girl saw her own face smiling up at her. Me, she said, an author. Next to the mirror was a stack of, of tiny blank books and a pile of pencils that Sam had sharpened with his little teeth. All that day, and for many more thereafter, people came to the little display to meet the author. Soon, there was a whole shelf full of books written and illustrated by people who'd never written a book before, all telling stories that had never been told before. Sam was a library mouse. His home was a little hole in the wall behind the children's reference books. All that night, Sam sat in his hole, thinking and thinking about the next book he would write. Would it be a mystery? An adventure? A funny book? A true story? There were just so many stories to tell. 
A heart, he thought. I'll just have to write one of each. Sam picked up his pencil and got to work. Don't you love that story? I think it's a great story. All about Sam becoming a writer. I wonder if you could actually become like Sam and become a writer like he did as well. Let's have a think about some of the key messages he tells us. Well, when he puts up that little sign saying, meet the author, and the little girl looks down and sees herself, what's that telling us? Of course it's telling us that we all can be authors. Some of us don't think we are. Some of us don't think we are because we think, I can't write very well, or I'm only just starting to learn to write. But I tell you what, we are all authors. If we've got a story to tell, if we can have a go at getting it down on paper or onto a device, even if we make lots and lots of mistakes, and if we can read it back to someone, then we are authors. What about having a go at what Sam did? Now, what sort of books did Sam want to write? Well, remember, his first one was an autobiography. What does that mean? Well, remember, remember that message he read? That he, re he read somewhere that a good place to start was writing about yourself, an autobiography, writing about yourself. We've all got a story to tell. Let's tell our stories. Let's write autobiographies. Right, that's one thing that Sam thought. What was his next thing? Oh, of course, he wrote that mystery story. Oh, he didn't write any others in the book, but he thought about what he was going to write. Remember, he thought that he might write an adventure story. Remember, he thought that he might write a true story. And there are all sorts of other types of books he could write as well. I wonder which one you would write. I wonder where you would start. You might even think I'd like to be about Sam and write, might like to write one of each of those and lots of other types of books you might think about in that as well. Yeah. Have a go at this. Now, how are you going to have a go at it? How are you going to have a go? Well, I reckon the first thing you need to do, having thought up what type of book, is to actually come up with an idea for writing. What's my idea? If I'm going to write a mystery, I wonder what the mystery could be about. Now, as you start to think about your idea, and as you maybe even start to talk to someone about your idea, you might want to do a little plan for your book. Now, the plan might be just doing a picture or drawing some pictures about what might be in the story. It might involve um, putting words around the pictures. It might involve you talking to someone else about what might be in the book. Uh, it might just be a matter that you've got that plan, that idea, and the possible contents in your head. Then, of course, you're going to start to write. You're going to start at the beginning, and you'll go on for as, as, as long as you need to, as long as you can. So you'll start at the beginning by just writing down your story, and you will go right through to the end. And do you know, I reckon... If you think to yourself, oh, I don't know how to write some of those words, though. Just have a go. It's really important that you have a go. Just say those words to yourself. Hear what sounds you can. Have a go at getting those sounds down and then just move on. All of us can actually write stories, even if we're just beginning writers. What are you going to do after you've moved from the beginning to the end? Well, obviously, you're going to reread it, and I reckon at that stage, you should actually look for some help from someone else who might actually help you make changes to it, that might help you get it as correct as you possibly can. And then finally, 
obviously you're going to want other people to read it. So you're going to have a go, you can publish it in all sorts of exciting ways. Remember how Sam published his? He had those little tiny books which he stapled together. Maybe you want to make some books which you are actually stapled together. Um, maybe you want to do it on a device so other people can see it. Maybe you want to do it on a big chart. There's all sorts of ways that you can publish your writing and have fun doing it. Do you know what? During this time that you're at home, I would love to see you, just like Sam did, having a go at writing as many stories as you can, maybe about as many ideas as you can, so that you can share them with lots and lots of people. Have fun, just like Sam did. Bye.